I'm Connor Kennedy. And I'm Will McCarg. And this is Comics in the Dugout. Obviously, there's no Matt Hurd here because, well, school's over. Matt Hurd and I don't live in the same town. I'm not so that's Matt Hurd. Problematic. Wait, what? I'm not Matt Hurd. Yeah, I just said that. Oh, shit. Hey, you're... That revelation for me. Yeah. You have a small, you have a smaller nose, so... Oh, yeah. that's it. That's the only difference between me and him. And yeah. also, he can grow facial hair and I can't. Very true. Anyways, so, this is our first review of the summer... And Will and I saw the nice guys back last week when he first came out, and boy, just general thoughts on this movie. Go awesome. see it. It was a great time. Probably one of the best times I've had in a theater in a long time. Yeah, I mean, like you had like that recent experience of going to see like Star Wars back in December, which is special because it was Star Wars. Mm -hmm. But the nice guys is just like great overall film. It was tremendously well acted. Everyone from Gosling to Crow to the little girl that played Ryan Gosling's daughter like actually shocked me how well of an actress she was. And it was probably someone to look out for in the future. The story was amazing. Mm -hmm. Comedy, every single joke hit me. Yeah. I was really surprised by that. I thought like some of them would be misses and some of them more to the audience in the theater, I think, but for me, like they all hit me hard. I don't know, man. I was in love with this movie. Yeah. You know, like 10 seconds in, and you just, like, you just, like, see Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe killed it in this movie. Yeah. He played Russell Crowe. How you think Russell Crowe would be in a comedy? Yeah. And it was great. And Ryan Gosling, no, well, playing Ryan Gosling as you think he would be in a comedy movie, and it was great. It was overall a great movie. They were essentially playing you know, themselves as P.I.s. Yeah, basically. Yeah. If you can imagine Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling as a P.I., then... Got a pretty good handle on this movie, but still, it was so good. And the thing is, I, I'm the kind of person that loves a good story. Yeah. So, this story, it didn't make it, 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 it was hard to follow. It was a bit of a stretch, too. It was a bit of a stretch, but, you know, it had plausibility with a little bit of insanity, and it, me it meshed so well. But I have to say, Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe together, their chemistry, it was like, yeah, yeah, it was. A, I, I would. I would say the closest comparison is Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum in Twenty One yeah. and Twenty Two Jump Street. It was the be yeah, and like uh, we also just saw X Men Apocalypse, and like the chemistry between Fassbender and McAvoy is amazing in those mm -hmm. films too. But I think like it was kind of unexpected to see how well Gosling and Crow were together on camera, and how well they were again with the actress playing Gosling's daughter in the movie. It was great, and also some something to look forward to in this movie: Ryan Gosling screams. So so many good moments in that are just like just added. So many quotable just, moments too. Just every every moment is just perfect when you just add that one quick high pitch ah! or no exactly no just like from Ryan Gosling because I love it. it I was, was also great. surprised how well the pacing was with this movie. I thought it would get like a little slow at some point, but I was just, I was into it like the entire movie. Yeah. There was only one scene that took me out, and it was like one of the very last scenes of the movie. Where, uh, spoiler alert. Okay, no, th this isn't really that big of a spoiler. It's just the villains in the movie are Detroit and the car companies, kind of, sort of, because pollution's bad. And there was a, there's a scene where a character looks directly into the camera and is talking about how you can't take down Detroit. You can't take down the big three. And that was, like, a little too on the nose for me. And, as, like, that and just the story could have been a little tighter, but overall, it was such a good movie. It was such an enjoyable experience. I want to go back and see it again. By far the best movie of 2016 so far that I've seen. I can't even argue with that. I mean, what you said about the pacing, though, is that what I find is that most comedy movies, you know, they start off strong. Yeah. You know, then they get weak in the middle, and then they, some of them end strong. So, you know, you get that in, like, 21, 22 Jump Street. Yeah. You definitely got that in Deadpool. There's, oh, like, there's gosh. a cool down in comedies with, like, the jokes. This movie just keeps hitting you, though. I know. And also, the action, too, in this movie is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Gosling doesn't really do that much action, but Russell Crowe is, like, uh -huh. has a couple of fight scenes that are so much fun. And Gosling you know, gets chased around. Yeah, but another thing I noticed, too, is that this movie... Fuck. What was I going to say? I don't know what you were going to say. I don't know, man. I, I, lo know. I lost my train of thought. Dang it, yeah, Connor. Well, anyways, we'll see if you can get it back, though. But until then, out of ten, what would you give this movie? 
I'd say a solid maybe 9.3. 9.3, wow. I mean, I, I, ne- I, I never rate comedy movies that high because there's always, like, a fault you can find in yeah. them. But th- there really aren't that many. You can point to, like, the convoluted story and be, yeah. like, like, be like that. But you're not going in... The cl- a comedy yeah. movie to see, to a, comedy see like, action a great movie too. a great story. No, you want to see you want to see Russell Crowe beat up some poor people. You want to see Ryan Gosling scream like a little bitch, and you want to see them make a ton of quips. Yeah, and because you're talking about the characters too, but the characterization too. Like they were both they they both have hard times in the past. They're both like not really feeling fulfilled in their career, and like you get that. In, I feel like a lot of people will connect to that too, which was mm. like great. Like I felt like a personal connection to both of these characters, so which is something I really dug. And like I said, like the story, saying like it's not tight enough or like it's a little too much, like that's just that's a nitpick for me because okay. everything else I loved about this movie. It no, it's not perfect, but it's still an amazing movie. I'm definitely buying it when it comes out on Blu-ray. All right, Connor. So let me rephrase the question to you. Out of ten, what do you rate this movie? I'm giving it a 9.9. 9. Oh, man, 9.9. It's hard to say something's perfect, but is, is damn, that, this was close. Is that higher than Star Wars? It might be. I think I gave Star Wars like a 9.8. Is it higher than Empire Strikes Back? Okay, Empire Strikes Back as a film is just like perfect. It's not my favorite Star Wars film, but it's a perfect film. How do you get, how do you say it's a per? okay, sorry, we're off track. Empire Strikes Back is the best, by the way. We'll make another we had this debate during X Men Apocalypse. We'll have it again another day. But for now, all we're gonna say is go see the Nice Guys. If you have the choice between the Nice Guys and any other movie right now, it's the Nice Guys. Definitely. I'm saying that as the guy obsessed with the X Men too, by the way. I know. Go see this it. guy loves comic book movies. His desktop is literally the Justice League. Yeah. Yeah. So, just again, just go see the Nice Guys. Give this movie your money, dude. They deserve it. X Men doesn't need it. This does. Go see it. Definitely. See ya.